and you can choose which way they go, but we want your whole hand and fingers straight. You do a lot like this when you're paddling, so we want those fingers straight, thumbs included. So I'll come along, especially to these two, and try. You can have them wide. Can you, and notice how any of these elbows are nice and straight, nice and watch, can you straighten those elbows? Allie's got really flexy elbows, so she likes this, but we don't want, we need to have her stay strong. Start with this, feel your pubic bone come up, and then let it go. So do a little back arch, little pubic bone zip. Little back arch, little pubic bone zip. Okay, everyone's got that? Now I want you to feel your feet. I'm putting a block between your feet so that they stay parallel because in a minute you're going to have to really connect your whole body. When you're here, move your pelvis side to side. Nice. Okay, now what do your hands just do? Trevor. Your, are your fingers still straight? Hold him. So now, okay. legs go long. So you can keep the block between your legs but the legs go straight or long. <laughs> so squeeze the block. Can your elbows be straight and still have your shoulders not by your ears? Can you feel the backs of your ribs against the floor? You breathe in, you straighten your elbows, you straighten your fingers nicely done, and you might feel tightness, but as a paddler, we need to keep this length. That looks great, Haley. So I call that Spider-Man hands. Left hand up to where, and so Trevor's gonna demo. So I'm pushing into Trevor's left hand and he's pushing into his right. Like crazy, fingers straight, thumb straight, thumb straight, yeah, and notice. Let the shoulder relax. So you say like this body scan, where are your back ribs? Now lift your right leg up. Right leg comes up. And just notice whatever you notice. Bring your left leg up. Keep those ribs where they are. Zip the heels together. Breathe. Push the back of your head into the mat. Lower your legs slowly. I don't care how low they go. They only go as low as you can keep the ribs. Excellent, Trevor. Nice, hold in. And then bring the legs back up. Okay, breathe. Do one more like that. Lengthen them down. Zip your heels and your big toes together. Marry them. That's what kids say. They say marry the toes. So, where are the back ribs? Take a breath in, have those back ribs sink. And this is something that when you're right before a, con uh, or a race, it's really easy to lose this breathing control. Breathe in and exhale, beautiful. But notice it takes focus. But if you can find it, let the shoulders go. What can you let go of? Breathe in and let go. Everyone's right hand comes up. And you can imagine maybe that you've got a paddle in it. So it doesn't, you know, you can imagine, you can put your arms in paddle position. Maybe you want to turn your fingers slight, slightly. Notice your ribs. Left, thank you. <laughs> up, up. Okay, pause for a moment here. What is that right leg doing? Is it active? Can you stand on the wall across the room with that right leg? Flex your foot like crazy as if it's standing. So you want every part of your body almost, yeah, flex this up. Okay, yeah, there you go. Now, bring the right leg up. And notice if I give you more feedback, what does it do, Trevor? Does it help you feel things better? Yeah. yeah. So you want to have this sense. So breathe in and exhale. Let's just take the left leg back down. There's not a recipe for this. I'm just giving you variations. What are those fingers doing currently? Can you still keep that length? Because when you're paddling, you want to keep the power through your torso and those arms. Try the other side. Or alternate the other leg. Yeah, beautiful. Okay. And then bring both legs up. Both legs together. Heels and toes kissing. Imagine you've got elf shoes on and bring the feet. Oh, yeah, and so for Trevor, I think he finds this quite tight. Notice what it did to those back ribs, and notice if your chin started to poke up. So I notice when I see the best paddlers, they have a nice long neck. So can you push the, imagine I'm doing this to your head. So push your head at sort of an angle towards the wall. Like what I want you to do here, feet are kissing. Put that other hand up on the wall. But now you're going to take the legs and you're going to circle them out 
and down and squeeze your inner thighs to come home and come up. Chin, like he's got a grapefruit or a pomegranate under it nicely. And then, so it doesn't matter how big the circles are, it matters how well you're anchoring your torso. I grab your knees and just give yourself a bit of the chest. So your feet are here, your elbows are here. So you're going to find where that sweet spot is. So notice I'm not here, but I want my inner thighs in. See if you can have your feet a little bit higher. You're good. Um, hold it a little bit higher. And see if you can relax your shoulders. So the more that you push your feet into the wall, the better, and see if you can let go of your tension in the upper back. So just squeeze, nice work. Now, from here, just relax. Can you imagine this is somewhat like paddling? And if you're like this paddling, it's not so effective, and some of you are doing that right now. So you want, and of course your legs can be apart when you paddle, and we could do, we could put a block between your knees, if you choose, it doesn't so much matter one way or the other, but what we want is you to feel relaxed that your deep abdominals, oop, we're one down, <laughs> um, are working so effectively. Notice what happens here when we put that block between your knees. I get better. Yeah, because you're using more feedback. You'll hear me say many times, squeeze your inner thighs. So now push your feet into here. Because if you know where you can get your power when you're in a tricky gait or when you're at the end of a course, that's a good thing. And so imagine your course and then think this is what you're going to find. Okay? You're going to go back and forth. It's called rolling like a ball. So I will see some of you are going to do that. At first we're going to use our arms to hold us, our thighs close to our belly. Go ahead, hold them. I'll get out of your way. So back. And keep the shape. <laughs> so feet above your knees. Okay, they tighten that up a lot more. So hold on. See everyone? And it's kind of fun. We could just, let's just play for a moment. Let's just roll back and forth like you're a kid. Like just, I don't care what it looks like. Just kind of give your back a massage. Bring that thigh close to your chest, close to your body. That's what matters. Elbows can be wide, so you can use your pecs. Probably with your hands is better, um, so your elbows are wider, Trevor. Feet above your knees. So Haley, you're going to keep that closeness, okay? And you're going to breathe on the way down, exhale on the way up. It doesn't matter if you get up. It does not matter if you get up. Even if you just go mini, it's more, yeah. Because this will help organize. If you see Mike's kids do this, they'll do this no problem. But we get older, go to school, train for kayaking, elbows wide, Trevor. And notice it kind of feels sweet. Would you agree? Mm. <laughs> do you see what, let's just show Trevor, do that again. So Trevor isn't as close here. You see how he, he goes, yeah. So, and watch when he goes back and come up. And so Trevor's going to get so much better. But then we're just going to have you do this back and forth. And why this has to be so good is that when you paddle, this has to be so organized. Okay, so you guys go. And again, I think you get the gist of it. We'll move on. But those are two really good drills that can be helpful. So it doesn't so much matter. You could use your paddle at your back. 
mask as well. Just go, if more is not better, go to where you can without cheating. Cheating means bending your knees, having your foot come off the wall. And create space like crazy. Nice, Haley. Open. Nice, Mason. Pull apart. So is everyone with me? So their knuckles are dragging on the ground. Your chest is forward, but your ribs are connected. There's always opposition. Notice where your feet are. Okay, so bend your knees a little bit. So ribs are connected. Chest is up. You drag your knuckles back towards that wall. Okay, you probably need to be a bit tighter. Then you pull a little bit, so it should be significant. So now you're going to bend your knees, nice Mason. Can you curl your belly? and let your arms come over. And Trevor, if you can, I think you can have a tighter band because we want to train that activation. So maybe hands a bit closer on the band and away you go. How does that feel? Okay, as a paddler, you do a lot front body. We need to keep it, your chest open. So bend your knees, I don't care how flexible you are, we just want to make sure that as you work on your shoulder flexibility, there's also activation. And Mike, you can have your shoulder as well. So you feel the difference, Trevor? Yeah. Okay. Well, how about you? <laughs> Another Spider-Man. You're going to go way down here, and it's a plank, but you're going to, and I'm not so good at it, and I sent it to Mike and Michal with someone doing it very well, but you're going to try and hold, and you think about when you hold your paddle, your head is going to be up, and you're going to Push like crazy into the floor, and you're going to keep this so engaged. You with me? So you can move the mats if you choose. And we're, our goal is to go stay in that position. Yeah, and actually, you don't even need to. You can straddle the mats. Thanks by showing me that trend. You show me you need to move the mat. But what is probably easier to start from okay. up. So if you're first in. And it's going to be, and you might if you want to cheat, put your feet up against the wall. And I don't care if you cheat to start with, so if you have your feet against the wall wider, maybe. So you're like a starfish, and so then you're, and your head is like, I'm pulling your head long. That's it, Trevor, you got this. So sometimes it's better to take advantage of the feedback of the wall, because it can help you feel the differences from shoulder to shoulder. So up any side, it's okay. So then you reach out your heels and really, yeah, you're good. Push like crazy through the palms of your hands. You know, we start with Spider-Man hands. Your elbows can still be soft. They don't have to be rigid. Really lots of energy out. Breathe. And Haley's thinking long in her head. If I push into Haley's head, that helps, doesn't it? Find it interesting how the position of your head can really influence mm -hmm. your power. Because that's a big, big deal. Take the blocks, and you might choose to have it here or here. Your elbows are going to be under your, your shoulders, and we're going to go up. And then we're going to come down, and think about what I was doing to your head. You're going to squeeze together and down, and then you're going to tap one knee down. Your heel can reach back to the wall, Haley, if you're using the wall, and the other. Call it down dog. Come up. Squeeze those elbows together, Trevor. Squeeze those elbows like crazy. Okay, then come down into plank. So elbows under shoulders. Stay there, Trevor. Long. Tap one knee down. Reach the heel long. Tap the other knee down. Squeeze those elbows. Really nice. You know what I'm saying? Ribs, nice. Deep. Work. It's working just to do that, Trevor, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's super important. So now I want you to bend your knees, which is pretty familiar to you guys, and keeping the backs of your shoulders on the ground, let your knees sway to the door. So right back, your shoulder stays glued. Bring yourself back. I'm just going to... And then go the other direction. And just do, and then do that a couple more times. Bring your knees up over your, yeah, we call it a knee fold, so you're here. So inner thighs are zipped. And so you could do the same thing in this position. You could knee sway your knees towards me to the right, left shoulder. Thank you. 
So notice, if you just think about it, most of you can make the correction. Exhale, squeeze your inner thighs, come back to midline. And it's this right dominant hand to someone that does a lot of academic work. And if you notice Trevor, he's kind of going over that way. So I often refer to it as a double rainbow. We don't want to have a lot of asymmetry, so we want it to be a double rainbow being the knees are making an arc and the feet. So you may not go as far, so really squeeze that roller with your hands, Trevor. So you notice how to get further, you sometimes do a little nice twist. Nice job with the shoulders, Trevor. Exhale, come back. Legs go up towards the ceiling. Longer levers. So legs straight. Inner thighs stay zipped. Squeeze the roller like crazy with your hands. Feel the back of your shoulders on the mat. Legs go to the right. Nice. <laughs> Exhale. Come back. That's okay. It's just nice. And then go the other direction. Nice. Keep it in that nice turn. Good correction. You're not twisting. Okay. And then come back. Good. Keep feeling those backs of your shoulders. What are those lower ribs doing? They like to pop a little bit. Legs hip distance apart. Right leg go long away from them. So the key here is that this right leg stays midline. Quite often it will drift long. So you can kind of hang out here. The backs of your shoulders are both glued to the bed or the floor and your ribs are connected. So those lower ribs are not allowed to pop. Breathe. Then you switch. And so sometimes you can think of train tracks if you... And switch. And so you can think about reaching out the heel, that's good, Trevor. Split, so right leg's long, left leg's up towards the ceiling. If I'm to give Haley feedback on both heels, I want her reaching out both heels. This is called helicopter, your legs are like propellers. You're gonna make a half knee on both legs. So you're gonna go around, and then you're gonna go the other way. Now, most paddlers' hips get pretty tight. Most athletes' hips get pretty tight. So if, um, good, and it probably feels different on both sides. Do one more on each side. Scissors is good. Scissors is maybe a better word. So lengthen. Trevor, keep that left leg in, because Mike will probably tell you it's a bit wide. The reason you're doing this is not anything to do with your hips. It's so that your upper back opens up so that you don't end up with neck and shoulder challenges and that your ribs and your core is working. So swivel around, helicopter one way and whatever feels good. Try to keep them kind of even but they may not be even. Go the other way and if you've got funny looking D's, some of you have like V's, <laughs> just notice it. But this movement for your hip is so important especially for your running conditioning. Okay, two more scissors. And the thing about this, you can do it anywhere. You don't need to have a roller, you can grab some. Pause for a moment before you do the helicopters. How many of you are thinking about your heads? Remember how when I gave you pressure into your head, it made you more connected, maybe stronger with different people? So push the back of your head into the mat and now do your next set of helicopters. Colton, can you straighten your legs? And again, nicely done, everyone. Every, and it doesn't? Yeah. So now move the roller away from you and just tuck it under your knees. Okay, and lay with your arms by your side. And just do a body scan. And notice maybe how open your upper chest feels. This is called teaser. You're going to go from here with nice straight arms. You notice I'm not here. We're going to lower down. We're going to go long. Hover your head, hover your feet, and then you're going to sequence up. And notice I'm not doing this. Now, lower yourself down so that your shoulder blade and your heel touch the floor at the same time. You got it, Trevor. Down. Watch your head. Chin, Trevor. Exhale, float everything up. Float up. Float up. Float up. Nice, Trevor. So
So try to keep those arms nice and long. Lower down, lengthen long, keep the chin short, look, yeah, look right there. Okay, heels and shoulder blades tuck, and then come up. We're going to lower your shoulders back. Keep your chin chin just where you're looking at it. And float up, float up, float up, please float. Your body stays up now, you're in the kayak. You lower, you lower your blades and you bring them up. Yeah, yeah, try to do it. You cast away. You're doing great, Trevor. Two more. Come on, up, 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 up. You got this. Are you feeling it? Remember if you concentrate, if you focus, push your head back to you. Yeah. yeah. So if you reach through your heels and your head, all of a sudden you start to feel a charge in your belly, correct? Yeah. You got it, Trevor? You got the charge? So you're going to just lower down. And you don't need to have all day. Yeah. Oh. And then you're going to come up. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but you <laughs> Neil's hips are going back. Think about your feet sliding together like we worked on getting that zip up the core. Those lower ribs are connected and then you can vary your arm position to different kayak strokes. Do one side. Yeah, you're good Neil. That's awesome. And then just do it the other side. So just hold it the other way. So then reverse the stick. Same, same. You obviously can vary the resistance once you get the form. So you can even go one side up, like you could put one end of the pole up and one down. So like, because then when they, yeah, exactly. That's going to be the easier way. If you take the left hand up, it's probably going to be a bit more challenging. But go back to your feet. Feel the connection through your feet, through the zip up your abs. Nice. All kinds of variations. Just make sure that you've got that torso connection that you're working on.